to glaze a king. So before we start this, uh, sometimes if you have a light wood, especially uh, your uh, piece is going to get a little bit dirty. It's going to get a little bit blackened from the oil on your hands or uh, whatever you're picking up from the knife. Um, and it's going to get on the features and stuff. Uh, yes, you can see there. I put my initials in. Um, not only besides besides the you know it's a little bit dirty that um, this will take out some of the little chunks of wood or pieces that may be um, in the little crevices that haven't come out. And basically, you're going to get a toothbrush or something like a toothbrush, and you're just going to go ahead and wash um, wash it with a little bit of soap, a little bit of light soap, and a little bit of water. And you don't want to soak your piece completely, um, but you know you can get pretty much most of his face wet there. Um, and then you, of course, will want to let it dry out. Um, before you go on to any of the other steps. So this is what I do. This is like a foaming hand wash. Uh, makes it nice and light and goes spreads around. Um, and it cleans up pretty quickly and easily. Um, so just save your old toothbrushes. They're kind of the best best way to go because uh, they're not too rough. I've, I have some other bristle brushes and uh, they can get a little bit too much. Um, so you can see there, I, I, you really, I really am getting it you know, pretty wet. Um, and it uh, usually doesn't cause a problem at all. Um, it's really only if you let it soak underwater for a while that the if that it would maybe cause cracking or take too long to dry out. Um, so and then you can see I go back in there with a the paper towel, and um, it it cleans up really well, really quick. Um, I, I learned this from another carver, and um, I, it's one of the magical tips that I've gotten over the years. And go back in there. Yeah, like in the in the hair and stuff in little places where there's like super small crevices, you know, there's maybe little shards that never came out and those bristles will take them out uh, without doing any actual sanding or anything. Still leaving uh, all the other wood. And now I'm ready for that, so we're going to let him dry. Uh, it won't take too long. And then we're going to move on to... Uh, in this specific process that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be putting on a urethane and then I'm going to be putting a stain on. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this type of finishing um, and this used to be called glazing nowadays people call it antique an antiquing finish or process or treatment um, and I just found, I was just reading some old books and they're like yeah this is called glazing I was like oh that makes more sense but you know everybody's into antique stuff these days um, so basically the idea is that um, the antiquing process is basically you put something dark on your piece and then you take it off somehow on the plateaus on the peaks so that it leaves the dark whatever it is in all of the crevices and that makes it look like it's older it's not just that it, it you know now we, we look at it as antiquing but the glazing process it it put makes the details really pop out because a lot of stuff especially light wood you're not really going to see stuff. Like in here, there's harsh lighting. It's nice so you can really see what's going on. But otherwise, if there's bright lighting, you don't really see it. So this process, these different processes can help really make your uh, piece pop out and uh, give it some more contrast and character and uh, really show some of the features that maybe you won't uh, be able to see otherwise. And so there's, there's a few different ways of doing this. I've tried a few ways that I've heard from other people, and they didn't work out at all so I advise you to take everything that I do with a grain of salt if every woods different the way everybody applies stuff is different different um, so just um, you know do some tests on some small pieces of wood so anyway back to what I'm doing right here I'm uh, painting on some polyurethane this is a um, oil based polyurethane which is the regular one there is also now a water based one which is like acrylic urethane or something I'm not sure um, one of my friends online is using that he says it works okay I think you need more coats of it but it does dry quicker um, so you can see that's basically all I did and um, <clears throat> uh, I do I kinda basically just don't want there to be too much in the crevices so um, a lot of times I'll go in there like this and I'll, I'll dry off the brush and I'll get out the big big thick parts that have settled in the crevices and wipe it. It's better to do a lot of thin coats of something than to do one thick coat because the one thick coat will pull in all the places and it'll it'll look bad and it won't retain the shape of what you actually had. And this this goes for painting, this goes for everything. Whenever you're doing finishes, you want it to be thinner than thick. Um, and oh yeah, so this is also a matte finish poly. You don't want your carvings to be shiny. Almost never you want them to be shiny. So you get a matte finish. That's why it looks white, looks like Elmer's glue, but it does dry clear. Um, 
it does not offer as good of protection, but for our needs, it's as good as it's ever going to need to be. Um, some of my favorite carvers use this kind of stuff, like Sean Sipa, and uh, go check out his stuff. He's a really great carver. He's got a few books that are awesome. And uh, uh, while this dries, let's go move on to the antiquing process. Okay, so there, I just went and got a little piece of cardboard. Uh, this is what I usually use to dry them on. If it's bent or something, then that's maybe even better. Um, it's better like plastic it'll get stuck on there uh, the cardboard if at the worst it'll you'll get a little tiny piece of paper that you can sand off there and finish up and clean but especially when it's bent it'll only touch it in a few places and oftentimes I'll go over and I'll give the cardboard a little shake you don't want to touch it until it's dry or so leave fingerprints or mush spots or something like that all right so here we go it's dry I am only going to do one coat of the polyurethane on this one it's going to change the way that the um, the stain affects it because the first coat doesn't completely seal it off it kind of just soaks in and it basically um, it's just kind of like the starting layer it's not really a whole lot of uh, urethane on top of the piece if I did a second or third coat then it would start really uh, building up on top of there um, and, and the more you do, the less the, the stain is going to affect it. I like for the stain to go in just a little bit to the wood so that it looks like it's actually staining the wood somewhat instead of sitting on top of a uh, thick coat, coating of something. Um, but it is a little bit of a, an, an iffy process. Um, so this is, okay, this is my stain. This is a gel stain, and we're using a gel stain because... One is it will sit on top and I can wipe it off better. And the other thing is, this is another thing I've learned from Sean Sipa, uh, is that... Um, it won't pull up in, as, as much like after you leave it it because it's so thick um, it's not going to run to a different place on the carving where than where you left it and uh, if, if you guys know other regular stains they're very thin they're made to be thin so they can go in crevices um, and they will do that so the gel stain works better um, be careful with the gel stains on the colors um, I the first one I got was I think uh, it was it wasn't a red color but it was like the it was a reddish brown and you couldn't really see it at all until it was actually on there and it just did not work at all ruined a piece with it so make sure you get one that is really like a yellow or actual brown base all of them are going to look brown but try to look for the more um brownish one this is a strange i'm not sure what brand this is it's um my girlfriend got it from me um so i don't you just have to look for these they're not at all the places um you might want to buy them online Generally, just go with the uh, um, kind of the lightest one you can, because you can always do more. This is pretty dark one, so uh, it's a little bit chancy, but it ended up working out alright. Uh, so you can see, I'm just kind of painting it on everywhere. Uh, you do want to go as fast as you can, <clears throat> because uh, you're going to be wiping it off, and the longer it's going to be sitting on top of there, the darker it's going to get in the places that you you know want to wipe it off of. So um, I just go ahead and go at it if it's you know really thick, whatever. I don't care. It's a small piece, and the stains doesn't cost that much money, so. Um, and if I need to, sometimes I'll use a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Um, and here I've got, I've got a clean, the, basically this is just like t-shirts that I cut up for, you know, good cloth, um, and start wiping that off. And this is basically it right here, you know, oh, by the way, yeah, definitely wear gloves because this is, you know, you'll have black brown hands for a week if you don't. Um, so yeah, I'm just wiping that around there and really soaking it up, um, Kind of at first, I get a good coverage and wipe it off, and then see where I want to uh, add more or take more off. So again, if I want to, if I have a place where I can't wipe it off enough and it's really still too dark, then I get in there really quickly with some rubbing alcohol and paintbrush, and um, or I just put the rubbing alcohol straight on the uh, my cloth, and I'll rub at it, and that'll kind of um, reliquify the stain a little bit and uh, and take it back a little bit another notch. Um, so this is about that's about it, um, and <clears throat> this is going to work better in some areas in carvings and others. You know, it has to be a certain size for the stain to sit inside of a crevice and for you to be able to wipe over it and just stay there. If the crevice is large enough, your fabric's going to go inside that crevice and it's just going to wipe it out. Um, so beards and and you know these guys work really well. Um, these kind of wood spirit kind of things at this size. Um, and also, it just even besides the size, if you press too hard or you just start rubbing too much, you may see that you're taking out too much of the uh, detail, the darkness in there. And so you can go back in there and just kind of touch it up and then wipe it a little softer or, or make sure your fabric is really, you know, have a flat spot so it doesn't uh, go inside of that crevice. Um, so it's really, this is, it's still kind of like you're painting, doing a little bit of an artistic thing while you're working on this. Um, <clears throat> and also, it's going to change a little bit 
after it dries. So sometimes after I look at it, I'll go back and do another coat and see how that goes. Uh, but basically that's it. This is how you get the uh, magical whatever. Okay, you see in the crevices it's still kind of wet up there. That's totally fine. Um, you'll see a picture of this afterwards and um, it doesn't it doesn't look too weird or anything. This stuff doesn't shrink or crack, so um, it, it just kind of leaves a nice little um, <clears throat> antique and, and contrasty finish. So yeah, there you went. I went again with, uh, that was actually just with some alcohol because I wanted to get a little bit more on there. I, I'd rubbed the wood a little bit too much and uh, so I wanted to liven it up in some of the areas on the, the top, like the cheeks and the nose, because those get rubbed a lot. So maybe go back in there. Yeah, you can see this is not an exact science. So, uh, But there you go, there you have it. And um, that is my antiquing process at the moment, my glazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, use the uh, cardboard and then let that sucker dry off. Okay, here's the finished project here. Um, this is only after one coat. He could probably use another one, um, but for our uses here, this is about as, you know, as much as you want to go. You don't want to get your carvings too, too dark because, um, you know, then they'll be across the room and it'll just be a dark thing, you know, so if it was larger maybe, uh, they, they can handle to be darker, but at this size, um, you know, you don't want to go too far. So, uh, there you have it. There's, um, the glazing and antiquing. Alright, come back, enjoy more videos, and carve safe.